Yo, good afternoon, viewers of YouTube. My name is Tyler of Chico Crypto, and welcome to another episode of Breaking Down the Blockchain. Blockchain, it deserves to be broken down. Some of the concepts are downright tough to grasp. The last of project especially needs to be broken down because the complexities of the technology can make even a tried and true blockchainer's head spin. On July 1st, Elastos achieves the major milestone of upgrading their main chain to support the release of their first side chain. So today we're going to be diving deeper into the world of Elastos and breaking down the first Elastos side chain. The first Elastos side chain is decentralized identification. So for us to understand exactly what's going on, let's get a little refresher of the overall blockchain structure of Elastos. The base layer of Elastos is the Bitcoin blockchain, and this is used because the proof of work consensus that Bitcoin employs has withstood the test of time. It is hands down the most secure blockchain to date. The likeliness of the Bitcoin network becoming prone to a 51% attack and being taken over is actually very slim, as more miners are joining each day and the ASIC market is maturing, leading to increased competition and less power from the mining pools. Now the Lasso's main chain utilizes merge mining with Bitcoin. This basically means the main chain is piggybacking on the Bitcoin blockchain's hashing power. Proof of work consensus between the two chains is reached simultaneously. A Bitcoin miner will just need to deploy the merge mining code to their SIC machine, and they will basically mine free ELAs while still mining their Bitcoin. The security this will bring to the Lastos main chain is enormous, and as more miners switch over to the mining the code, the more secure the Lastos main chain will get. Hint hint, in December, Jihan Wu has said that the mining pools he is in control of, BTC.com, ConnectBTC, and AmpPool, would be switching over 40% of their hashing power to the new merge mining code. Together, those three pools are providing over 36% of Bitcoin's hashing power. This would mean in December that Elastos main chain will have over 5.14 billion giga hashes of mining power. Compare that with Ethereum's total hash rate of only 292,000 giga hashes. We have a blockchain that is over 15 times more secure than Ethereum based on hash rate. With this security, Elastos is bulletproof like no other blockchain. No double spend attacks on the ELA main chain and no 51% attacks. The main chain serves as a small but important role of trading and transferring ELA and all other tasks such as smart contracts and in this video's case identification is handled by the side chains to reduce main chain blow. The decentralized identity side chain is a major component to the overall Elastos ecosystem. And because security of identities is of the utmost importance, the ID side chain is merge mined with the Elastos blockchain and the Bitcoin blockchain. Identities on Elastos will be the most secure identities in the blockchain space due to this merge mining. Although there won't be any sidechain tokens that the miners receive like ELA tokens, but miners will be collecting fees of ELA for securing this sidechain. This creates another use case for ELA tokens, and the value of it doesn't come from being a payment method, but from growing its ecosystem with many highly used decentralized applications making use of the IDs a very, very common thing. This is highly important as IDs will serve as a trust zone for the new internet and requests for application data access will have to first be confirmed by the identity sidechain. Data access is controlled by the blockchain and proof of work consensus with the Bitcoin blockchain makes sure it's as secure as it gets. When creating an ID on the sidechain, your details entered based on your level of desired identification will be recorded on the sidechain blockchain and secured through the subsequent hashes on both the ELA and Bitcoin blockchains through the merge mining. This ID is a universal ID that can be used for user profiles on apps, devices, and virtual machines. Applications being built on Elastos will inherently be ID compatible, letting you have full control of not only your device data, but also application data that runs through the Elastos technology. Elastos applications run in a sandbox environment and are not allowed access to the internet. When a dApp sends a request for the data, the Elastos runtime will first check the secured IDs of the user, including personal ID, device ID, and virtual machine ID. 
and it will make sure it is authorized to access the data. Once verification is confirmed, the Elastos P2P carrier reaches out to the internet with the request from the dApp and then returns the data to the user. No man in the middle to intercept the data, no DDoS attacks since ID verification is required, and since code is sandboxed, no chance for virus infections. So to understand the full potential of Elastos and their DID, let's compare it with another project who is aiming to create a new internet, Blockstack and their Blockstack ID. Blockstack has the goal of a decentralized naming and discovery service, which they call the Blockchain Name Service, or BNS. Blockstack employs a similar initial design, with the Bitcoin blockchain as their public key infrastructure, and they provide consensus on the order in which those operations were written. The ID, or BNS, is stored in a virtual chain layer, which you can almost think of like a virtual machine for hardware. It's simply a virtual blockchain on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. And here is where security is lost with Blockstack, the virtual chains. The virtual chain only contains keys and pointers, allowing end-user data to be stored in pre-existing virtual storage systems, which are usually centralized. Examples, Dropbox and Google Drive. This goes back to an inherent security issue of centralized systems. Your data is still being left on these servers, which are left open for hacks. Yes, IPFS system could be implemented with Blockstack, but data retrieval with a multitude of nodes could end up slowing down its performance. The benefits of Blockstack is it's trying to replace internet DNS, but it's still relying on the authenticity of data stored in central servers. Elastos goes beyond this, as your data and assets will be owned by you, stored on your devices, and eventually when it matures with high performance, IPFS. The virtual chain's virtual machines, Ethereum VM, Java VM, Linux VM, will all face another problem. The code will leave the machine when being requested for data. For example, with Java, the code needs to be turned into Java native interfaces to interact with applications and programs specific to hardware and operating system platforms written in the usual C and C++. I've mentioned this before, the component assembly runtime car that Elastos has developed is one of the most significant pieces of technology. It is what makes this platform so special. DApp developers can program in their native code, even Java, and Elastos has a complete set of novel C and C++ APIs and frameworks that correspond to Java APIs and frameworks of Android. Even from the Blockstack website, they highlight that you use JavaScript in any of the web frameworks or libraries. Java equals Java native interfaces, which equals security issues. As time goes on, the issues that Blockstack was trying to solve will still haunt them. Whenever code leaves the virtual machine, it becomes vulnerable and Blockstack hasn't addressed that one bit. Well viewers, you know what time is coming. It's Elastos time. The full release of the end-to-end -end solution will come after August of this year. The smart web will have arrived and developers will have full access to start building the applications of tomorrow. Cheers, and as always, I will see you tomorrow.